our school buses to Idaho. Good evening. The time is now 7.30, and I hereby call this March 28th meeting of the City Council to order. Would you all please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And would the clerk please call roll. McHale. Here. Bud Matz. Present. O'Brien. Here. Veneziano's absent. Bassesi. Here. Reyes. Here. Sunoika. Here. With six present and one absent, there is a quorum this evening. Uh, therefore, members of the audience are reminded that these proceedings are being recorded for current and future broadcasts over the city's cable television channel, as well as our other media outlets. It looks like for the forced order of business we have is to approve minutes from a previous meeting and that meeting is the March 14th, 2023 City Council meeting. Is there a motion to approve this set of minutes? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Sonoyka. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. Appreciate that. Are there any corrections, additions, <coughs> or deletions to this set of minutes? <coughs> okay. Seeing none, the question is, shall the minutes be approved? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and the minutes are approved. <coughs> and now we're going to change it up a little bit, and I'm going to look for a motion to deviate from this evening's agenda to present a proclamation for the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam Veterans Day. And so with that, I look for that motion to be made. Thank you, Alderman Budmatz, for the first. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Bassesi, for the second. Um, is there any discussion on deviating for the proclamation? Okay. With no discussion on that, I'll ask that all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and we're going to deviate to review the proclamation. We'll review this proclamation in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War Veterans Day. Whereas, in 1982, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial was dedicated in Washington, D.C. to commemorate those members of the United States Armed Forces who died or were declared missing in action in <coughs> Vietnam, and were as members of the United States Armed Forces who served bravely and faithfully for the United States during the Vietnam War, were caught upon, were, were caught upon their return in the home crossfire of public debate about the involvement of the United States in the Vietnam War. And whereas on March 29th marks the 50th anniversary of the day that combat and combat support units withdrew completely from South Vietnam and whereas veterans of the Vietnam War faithfully served and contributed to the military and in the 50 years since have faithfully served and contributed to their communities since returning home. And whereas the Vietnam War veterans have worked for the last 50 years to promote awareness of the importance of communities empowering veterans and the necessity of helping veterans readjust to civilian life after military <coughs> service. And whereas Vietnam War veterans have worked to assist veterans returning from other conflicts, including wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and to support the reintegration of younger veterans into civilian life. Whereas the establishment of a day to welcome home veteran Vietnam veterans is an appropriate way to honor those members of the United States Armed Forces who served in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. This annual Vietnam War Veterans Day is an opportunity to honor all Vietnam veterans and their families and recognize the contributions they continue to make to our state and our communities. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Joe Gallo, in the city of Rolling Meadows, do hereby extend greetings and best wishes to all observing the March 29, 2023 as Vietnam War Veterans Day in Rolling Meadows. So I understand that um, Mr. Ron Wheeler, you're gonna come up and collect this Proclamation, is, is Ron here today? Hi, Ron. Ron? Okay, this is on. So Ron, I understand that you're also the chairman of our Veterans Committee here for Rolling Meadows, is that correct? That is correct. And you and, and every other member of the Veterans Committee have faithfully served our community uh, in addition to your faithful service for the country. And I appreciate that. And Thank I you. welcome you all home from that era. Thank and you. hopefully we move past that. So I'd like to present you with this. And if you have any comments you'd like to make, the floor is yeah. yours. Well, first of all, uh, on behalf of the uh, uh, Rolling Meadows Veterans Committee, 
and all Vietnam veterans, we accept this proclamation. Welcome home. So all the veterans that are here today, if you're in the audience, I'll see a lot of caps supporting your, your time and service. If you want to come up here and take some photos, the floor is open and the time is yours. Don't be shy. <laughs> veterans committing. <laughs> veterans. <coughs> this is to recognize you guys and your service. <laughs> Get the, get the guys up here for uh, for a picture of Vietnam veterans, please. All of you. As a uh, as the commander of the Mount Prospect American Legion, my name is Bill Starr, and I'd like to tell you that when you say "Welcome home" or "Thank you for your service" to a Vietnam veteran, it's extra special these days. Here's why. In August of 1969, uh, correction, 1970 of August, um, I got on a plane at Benoit Air Base, flew over Anchorage, landed in, near, in New Jersey, checked out of the Army, got on a civilian flight in my uniform, landed at O'Hare Field, walked across the concourse in my uniform, not expecting who knows what, somebody yelling baby killer, spitting on me or whatever. That didn't happen. But I did catch a cab, went home, took my uniform up, neatly put it in the closet, shut the door, and began the rest of my life. Nobody cared. So when you now say, thank you very much for your service and welcome home, it's significant to all of us. So thank you for that. Now you are welcome to stay for the remainder of the meeting, although you don't have to, there's no obligation, so feel free if you'd like to leave, now's the time as well. It looks like everyone's making their exit who wants to. So I'm going to look for a motion to close the floor. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Sonoyk. Is there a second? Second. Alderman McHale, was it? Second. Thank you, Alderman McHale. <laughs> All right. If there's any discussion on closing the floor, I'll take it now. If not, then I will um, ask for all those in favor, say aye. 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 And those opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. We will close the floor and move on with the next item on the agenda, which is the mayor's report. There's nothing for the mayor to report this evening. Are there any ward reports? Alderman Sonica. Uh Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I just wanted to give an update on the water main break along the Jody Court and um, Colleen Court subdivision off of West Frontage. Uh, I know that uh, those residents were without water for several hours, and a big thanks to Public Works and our arborists for taking care of that immediately. We will have um, a, a city staff report regarding uh, emergency um, uh, emergency responses to a larger area related to water mains uh, at the conclusion of today's City of Council meeting. However, if you don't have time to look at that or want any notes afterward, feel free to reach out to me at Ward 7 at cityrm.org and I can provide you with additional information. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sonica. Any other ward reports? Alderman Bassesi. Yeah, um, just want to let the residents of my ward know that uh, um, the police are looking at the uh, uh, speeding issues and potential uh, uh, solutions to those speeding issues that we're having within the ward. Uh, you know, it is it has gotten a lot worse, so uh, I appreciate the, the work that the police department is doing. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bassesi. Any other word reports on this side? 
Okay, if not, then we will move on to the next item on our agenda, which is opening up the floor for public comment. And prior to doing so, I'm going to read a couple of housekeeping rules just to keep everything in order. And to that point, in order to secure the rights of the citizens of the city to a fair and just representation before their elected officials and to guarantee the elected officials an order and dignified form in which to conduct the city's business, no person shall be allowed to engage in any activity that will disrupt or <coughs> disturb the orderly proceedings of the city council meeting. Per the rules of procedures, the public is to address the city council, and the fact that no member of the city council responds does not mean that the city council or any member thereof agrees or disagrees with the comment. In order to attain this objective, the following rules of conduct are hereby established. One, any person who seeks to address the city council at this time for the public comments shall be permitted to speak only upon recognition of the presiding officer, and such person shall adhere to the following provisions. Each person addressing the city council shall state their name for the record. Each person shall be granted no more than five minutes of the allotted 20 minute time in order to address the city council. Questions and or commentary shall be limited to city business. Comments supporting or opposing a nominated person's candidacy for elective office shall be considered out of order. <coughs> discussion, discussion shall take place in a professional manner which displays mutual respect. And finally, profanity shall not be used or tolerated in any form um, with that. I beg anyone's pardon in advance if I get a name wrong, but the first name on the list is Michael Brisk Brisker? Brisk Brisker, yes. Brisker. Yes. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council. So bear with me. I have never spoken at a, uh, at a session such as this, and I don't think I've spoken in front of a meeting in 30 years. So do bear with me. Um, as I said, my name is Michael Brisk here. My wife, Diane, and I, we live at 5100 Grove Road. We are on the west edge of the Lober Farm, which is what I'm here to speak uh, about. And we are just north of the creek. In fact, a portion of the creek runs through our property. So I was, uh, you'll see why this becomes relevant. I was raised in Skokie. I lived most of my adult life in Chicago. Uh, about 12 years ago, my wife and I got sick of Chicago. We decided to move to suburbs. My friends are saying, what are you doing move to the suburbs? So since many of my friends are from the North Shore, I started looking in the North Shore. So we were looking around, looking around, and our agent then calls me up and says, you got to see this house. She, says, she said, it's in Rolling Meadows. I said, uh, where's Rolling Meadows? Uh, she convinces me to see the property said you just got to see the property my wife and come my wife and I come and visit the property we drive up the house is magnificent the the grounds are magnificent we tour the house we tour the grounds there's a creek running behind the house I've never lived on a creek the closest I've come to water is is going to the swimming pool uh, after about an hour on the property my wife and I as we're leaving she said we're buying this house. So uh, we bought the house. We love the house. We love being in Rolling Meadows. We, ha we have had no connection to Rolling Meadows until we moved here. We love being here. So even though the value of my house has gone down precipitously, my tax bill has gone up significantly, and the flooding behind the creek behind my house, it was a creek and now it turns into a veritable lake after it storms. Despite all this, we love being here. But I have now been informed that there is a potential development, which I like to call fondly the monstrosity, that is being proposed to be built on the Lober Farm, which is literally my backyard. Not, it's not legally, but it's literally my backyard. Um, and so despite how much we like it here, that will be one bridge too far. And if this, if this development gets approved, we are putting our house on the market. We are leaving. I've spoken to se several of my neighbors. They pretty much feel the same way. And uh, I'm going to leave it to my neighbor, James Kroll. He's going to be presenting you with a lot of facts as to what's wrong with this, this, propose, this proposal. Uh, I'm going to just basically be providing you a few f facts about myself 
and and my life with my wife in Rolling Meadows but for the most part I'm going to be speaking I'm, I'm going to be presenting you with my opinions um, so from what I gather of, of this property it's going to be hundreds and hundreds of rental units being built in a concentrated area anyone who is familiar with I assume you're all familiar but just as a reminder I live on an acre my neighbors have an acre a half acre virtually every house in this area is a single family home on a big sprawling plot of land one minute left um, if this development is built as presented uh, once again my opinion is the neighborhood is forever changed the single family neighborhood with rolling hills and trees which we have come to love will be no more we will leave my opinion is that uh, my property value I won't be able to get anywhere near what my house is concerned my house house is worth and I am presenting to you my opinion that the value of every house in that area is going to uh, get crushed I'm not here to speak on property values. I'm here to speak on what makes Rolling Meadows special, what my wife came here for, what we stay here for, what we love about this place. And, but if the develop development is allowed, we are leaving because this Rolling Meadows in our neighborhood will no longer be special to us. Thank you for taking the time. I have a lot more to say. I'll save it for another meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briskier. And for the residents and those who may not be familiar, <laughs> familiar with the Lober Farms project that is a development, as the council knows, occurring in Schaumburg. And uh, a lot of discussion about approval was taking place. And unfortunately, we as a council don't have any jurisdiction on that approval. Uh, for the next name on the list, we have Mr. Walter Wilson. Walter Wilson. Hello. Hi, sir. <coughs> Uh, my name is Walter Wilson. I've been a resident of Rolling Meadows for about 30 of the last 50 years. Uh, I currently live at 3111 Brockway in Rolling Meadows. Um, <coughs> the reason that uh, many of our neighbors are here today is the threat to our community that's posed by the Nitty Group plan that was um, presented here last month. And first of all, it was presented, was done in a way that prevented us from identifying their plans. Uh, it was not entered as city business, even though we were on city property, and no one left with a copy of it. So some people took a, a photo uh, on their phone of parts of it, but we don't have uh, the plan that Nitty presented, and they're very busy hiding it, uh, we believe. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the beginning of why we're frustrated with the whole process. Um, <coughs> we do know that their plan involved high density, multi-story housing for what we know as the Lober horse farm, the Lober property. And as the gentleman before me uh, described, um <coughs> that, that is a potentially very detrimental uh, effect. We want to ask you to do a couple of look backs uh, with me. Um, first is there was a plan proposed uh, to Schomburg in 2017 to build 98 single family homes and that was reduced uh, according to their minutes to 87 homes. In Schomburg, those are single family homes. Um, Schomburg decided that some of those lots were too small, the density was too much, and uh, they did not approve that application. And as a result, the um, builder uh, pulled his application. So that's an important part of history is until recently, this is what we looked at, uh, a kind of a limitation by Schomburg as to what they would allow. And it was reasonable, you know, that single-family homes be built uh, in that area. Um, <coughs> additionally, uh, Schomburg, well prior to that, 
had published guidelines on how it thought that pr Lober property should be developed. And I have a copy I'd be happy to leave behind. You can Google it and, and find it as well. Uh, but it's uh, six pages of details of how they think uh, the property should appropriately be developed. It's nothing at all like what Nitty has in mind. It's, in fact, just the opposite. Um, it, uh, um <coughs> yeah, in those guidelines, uh, it included, and I'm taking the words directly from it, being sensitive to the existing surrounding neighborhood, natural stormwater management practices, maintaining open views, and several other parts of that uh, plan. Uh, that plan did include Brockway Street as an emergency exit. Um, we are kind of assuming there had to be some discussion with Rolling Meadows uh, in order for them to have part of their plan being to use a Rolling Meadows Street um, as, as uh, an emergency exit. Let me come back to that. Uh, the second look back that we'd like to ask you to look back with us uh, it's much further back in time, but extending to current times. And that is, in 1991, an area generally known as Old Plum Grove Woodlands was voluntarily annexed to Rolling Meadows. That's uh, about 68 single-family homes, mainly to the south and west from Plum Grove <laughs> Junior High School, um, including the very property that you spoke of. Uh, although I don't think you were there then. Um, 30 seconds, sir. Okay. Um, that group of homes forms a complete border for the Lober property at its north and west sides. The south border is International Village and Treehouse, and other Rolling Meadows properties off Meacham Road, Greenwich Court, and Woodcliffe border the Lober property and will be uh, developed. But back to our annexation, I'd like to make this group aware because not sure how many were uh, here in Sir? 1991. Five minutes. If you can wrap it up, please. Okay, I'll wrap Thank it you. up. Um, it reads, the city reserves the right to widen, improve, and maintain depicted rights of way within the area next pursuant to the Illinois Department of Transportation Standards for Rural Cross-Section Elements. Uh, that's in quotations and parentheses. 18-foot wide pavement with two footstone soldiers shoulders on each side, no curbs, gutters, sidewalks, uh, et cetera. Um, and that agreement expired in 2011, but we hope that Rolling Meadows will continue as they have since 2011 to live with the character of it. We still have our five zoning, nobody's sure. changed that. Uh, that protects the, the basic integrity. So you have to wrap it up. Okay, and the bottom line of it all is we're hoping that you will not uh, do anything like approving Brockway as an entrance or exit to the lower property. Mr. Wilson, I'd like you to stay right there. Um, yeah. In the four years that I've been here, I've, I've made it a point to, to not respond to feedback to members of the public who voice their concerns, but I have to apologize to you um, with what you started off with. And you mentioned that there was a, a public hearing here and it was not broadcast publicly, and that was because of me. Yeah. I met with the village of Schomburg knowing that there was going to be this potential development at mm -hmm. that site, and I asked Schomburg in good faith if we could bring the developer here because I know there would be a handful of residents who are gonna be very uh, concerned with a potential development there. I, I understand that every resident is reasonable and understands it's not gonna stay that way forever in the mm -hmm. current condition that's in, but I brought this to your attention as a group in hopes that that would that would incite or inspire the group of residents to continue the conversation with Schomburg because Rolling Meadows ultimately has no discretion in what occurs there. We have superficial opportunities when it comes to the areas like the emergency access or egress mm -hmm. and potentially with the water utility, but that's minor. The plans that you spoke about 
were conceptual, they weren't submitted to the village of Schaumburg and therefore they weren't confirmed plans and mm -hmm. they weren't plans that could be distributed or held onto because they, they don't even, they're not approved in any capacity, so they don't exist. Right. And it was our hope, my hope, that when you saw these plans or when you heard about this development coming, that you guys would come together as you are, but concentrate that effort in the village of Schaumburg and make sure that they hear your voice and make sure that they hear your concerns and make sure that they understand that you're gonna be impacted and right. you want that impact to be limited and still keep opportunities for development to occur, but preserve the integrity of the land that you guys love. Right. And so I wanna say, I, I, I <coughs> tried to bring a courtesy to ensure that you guys would have attention on a matter and a voice at the table, but it, it seems like it's spiraled into a capacity where um, many of the members in the council that are specifically responsible for these wards um, are being held up to a standard that they could never achieve because they don't have the ability to direct or call the shots as to what happens with that property. They're doing everything they can to defend the integrity of, of the properties that sits within the city of Rolling Meadows, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's in all of our best interest to be at the table with the village of Schaumburg. And so I continue to ask you guys to keep up and keep the pressure on the village of Schaumburg. Okay. We will do what we can here. I Thank you, sir. I was in our best interest. The next name on the list is James yeah. Kroll. This is why I don't okay. want to do this. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, everybody. <coughs> um, I do public, plenty of public speaking. It's never time public speaking. So somebody do me a favor. If I'm like running, uh, if I got a minute left, somebody just say, <laughs> please. But, but I, I've, I've got information that very few people are aware of. And it's all technical information, okay? On, on February 3rd, I expressed my concerns to Nandy via his neighbor's email address. I, I, I had seen three to four, like, 100-year floods in my backyard. Um, we, we, Salt Creek cuts through our backyard, okay? And, and, and nobody knows the impact of the flooding, flooding in Salt Creek better than I do. We've lived here for seven years. Um, Nandy said, and I quote, the four organizations are going to review the impact of Salt Creek. FEMA, City of Schaumburg, MWRD, and Illinois Department of, of, of uh, Water Resources. It, it turns out that he's, from my perspective, he's incorrect. I was, I was concerned about flooding. There's only two organizations that have any, any authority with regard to stormwater management. It, it's MWRD and the City of Schaumburg. And the City of Schaumburg, with all due respect, has a conflict of interest. Okay? Um, and the City of Schaumburg's expert in, in stormwater management resigned about six weeks ago. That's a fact. And actually, I, I was on her LinkedIn page. She's a very astute woman, but they've lost her. Um, at the 2-9 uh, town hall in this very room, I indicated, you know, I've seen three to four massive floods in the last six years. I, I, I provided some pictures, and I, I made a claim, and, you know, I, I expressed my concerns. Um, after that, I did a little research. Um, it, it essentially, what, what I did, and all the persons, Mikhail and Sunoika, ha have my report. But what I did is, on May 15, 2020, we had a massive flood that was at around 2,000, that, that was at around 716 to 717 foot elevation, okay? And I said, you know, this is right around the 100, fl 100 uh, year flood plain. And, and basically I said, it's happened three to four times. But who, who am I? I mean, why would anybody believe me? So what I did, is essentially I looked at the rainfall measurements at O'Hare over the last six years, and I found five events, five events, okay? So I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't BSing anybody. Uh, I'm being careful about the profanity. <laughs> but, 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 but I found five events to back up the fact that I've got facts, and, and I know what I'm talking about, okay? Um, what else? Um, on, on February 10th, I, I, I went to Town Hall, I, Schomburg Town Hall, and uh, Martha Dooley, who is responsible for the developments, was not in town, but her colleague was. Um, I got a lot of lip service, but everything was risk management. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer. I know what risk management means. Risk management means we'll try not to make it too much worse. That, that's literally what it means, okay? So anyway, with regard to my report that I'd be happy to share with anybody, okay? It's a, it's a matter of public rec record as far as I'm concerned. The floodplain itself from FEMA dates back to August of 2008. It's only in force for five years, and it's nine and a half years expired. They take no responsibility for it. That, that's a fact, okay? Um, I provided pictures of, pictures of my shed on the water. Well, I, actually, I, I provided stain marks on my shed, and I provided where the water was on that particular day. Two minutes? Really, two minutes? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
I'll, I'll cut to the chase. Um, when I spoke to, I, I, I reached out to Illinois Department of Natural Resources, who gave me contour maps. Now, interestingly, the contour maps don't match the FEMA map all that well. So e even though I'm confident, according to the FEMA map, we've had three to four 100-year events, the contour maps are different. I think the contour maps are ac actually correct, okay? What I uncovered is, a a and, and, and I would invite anybody to my home to verify this, what I uncovered is that at a, at a 717 foot elevation of flooding, Nitty needs to build a bridge that is six feet high off the ground and 250 feet long. And it needs to hold the tractor trailer. I would be shocked if he was aware of this. I, I, did, the, I did the rough estimates. It's a three to five million dollar bridge, probably minimally, okay? So I've got two asks of Rolling Meadows and, and an offer of my consideration. My asks are, if Nitty did not understand the nature of the property, and he doesn't know how to develop it, um, I, I, you should hold him accountable for building that 250-foot bridge. Uh, he, he should not build a 100-foot bridge and then have the 87 homes on the North Meadow of Rolling, uh, on the North Meadow of Rolling Meadows e e ingress and egress on Brockway because that's not their problem. He, he needs to spend that $5 million. If he didn't know what he was getting into from day one, that's his problem, and you should hold him accountable to it. My second ask is he should be building retention basins, not detention basins. They hold water. They don't dump more water into Salt Creek to impact my property and everybody downstream, uh, of 40 miles downstream of Salt Creek. Those are my asks. There's, there's two. If I've taken up five minutes, thank you very much. And, and I, I, the, the, only other thing I'm gonna, uh, the only other thing I'm going to offer is I'm a PhD in engineering. I have 30 years ex of experience. And I live on Swell Creek. I'm the subject matter expert on that property. I will consult with Rolling Meadows for free if anybody would like me to, for free. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Considered. <laughs> Steve Hollish. My name is Steve Hollish, and I live on Deepwood Lane, and I'm here to discuss Lober property, naturally, which you're all getting feedback on tonight, which I thank you for bringing it to our attention uh, that you got Nitty to come in here, but maybe you should have thought this is opening Pandora's box because of the flooding issues. So maybe it should have had a disclaimer that Schomburg should have been here that same night and going forward and say, direct everything after that to Schomburg because you, as the council, only are responsible for a small number of people over off of Meacham there that bound back to Salt Creek. Now, I guess going forward, we should all, meaning the people here, show up to Schaumburg yeah. and voice our concerns and go forward. But I think what I like, I would like, as well as some of the residents, would like to know the council's idea, the members of the council. Maybe by a straw vote at the end of the meeting, you can say how many people are in favor of this and how many people are opposing it. So that would eliminate anybody coming to you directly if you don't support it. If you support it, fine. We would use that information going forward to Schomburg saying, member of this council has this approval and whatever else. Really, there's only one person that has any buy in this, and that's Karen for Ward 1 because that's her ward. The rest of you are kind of east and not even approaching this. So you're looking at me with that disgust. No, I just, sir, I don't know what, what, what good it would do if for us to, to state our opinion. Uh, our opinion means nothing to Schomburg. Exactly, you know, but it means so. a lot that you're having residents on that property yeah. that are Rolling Meadows residents and would like to hear the feedback of do you support it or don't. If you don't support it, not. It's a simple straw vote. Of course. Doesn't mean anything to anybody because you're right. Rolling Meadows has no stake in the game. But it's just one more item that we would have saying Rolling Meadows really doesn't go along with this either, or some people do, some people don't. That's all. It's, it's real easy just to get buy in. So that's what I'm here for tonight. I understand all the people are concerned about flooding, and I talked about it last time flooding, congestion, and everything else that Nitty really hasn't looked at yet. And I don't know if Nitty ever will. I don't even need to know if Nitty will get in front of Schomburg and say, 
we want to build 400 families and they're going to go no way but that's up to Schomburg so that's all I'm looking for you people is the simple either you back the residents early meadows or you don't simple thank you thank you say Lee F Lee yeah, uh, last name first okay Lee first scene okay all right and then it looks like there's a another Lee Adelson yeah. okay good evening council and mayor I am back it has been a year not gotten better it's gotten worse uh, reference to 4305 Weber Drive a lot of loud engine revving both from people who live there and people who are visiting there um, there was another incidence of drag racing last month I didn't call it in because I oh actually I did call that one in. there was another one that I didn't call in um, the last response that I, not the last one, the one before the last that I spoke with the officer on, she basically told me that that car is not in the driveway. And then she told me she felt the hood of the car and it was cold. So was it in the driveway or was it not in the driveway? I reminded her that my living room window looks straight into their driveway. I know the cars that come and go from that driveway. And she's like, well, they told me they haven't used their car in an hour. I said, I'm telling you, They've used their car and they've revved up and down the street multiple times. Um, the last, I've had all the calls pulled for the last three years. There's 179 of them. There's probably been about six or seven more since the end of that report. Um, she then told me, well, we can't write them tickets for it because it's just going to get thrown out in court. I'm willing to sign a complaint and go to court with you if you need me to. Um, she just had a very bad attitude towards me. Um, every other officer that's responded has been professional and pleasant and understanding. I've had issues with her in the past, and I've mentioned it to the police chief, and I said I didn't want to file any complaints about it, and I don't want to file any complaints about it. <coughs> they have a hard job. I don't envy police officers. My uncle was a Cook County Sheriff. A lot of my friends are uh, Hillside and Chicago police officers. I get it, their job is not easy. Illinois the Motor Vehicle Statute, Section 12602, Mufflers Prevention of Noise. Every motor vehicle driven or operated upon the highways of this state shall at times be equipped with an adequate muffler or exhaust system in constant operation and properly maintained to prevent any excessive or unusual noise. No such muffler exhaust system shall be equipped with a cutout, bypass, or similar device no person shall modify the exhaust system of a motor vehicle in a manner which will amplify or increase the noise of such vehicle above that emitted by the muffler originally installed on the vehicle. As such, the original muffler shall comply with all requirements of this section. Illinois Statute Chapter 625, Subsection 505. No person shall operate any motor vehicle in such a manner as to cause or allow to be emitted squealing, screeching, or other such noise from vehicle <coughs> tires due to rapid acceleration or excessive speed around corners or other such reason. Exception is only for emergency vehicles or if you're trying to get out of the way of an accident. Rolling Meadows, section 94-1, anyone obstructing any street or sidewalk without permission from the mayor, city council, or chief of police shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. And each day or part of days, such obstruction or encumbrance shall continue will constitute a di distinct and separate offense. Rolling Meadows, section 70-37, Item six, exhaust discharge. To discharge into open air the exhaust of any steam engine, stationary internal combustion engine, or motorboat engine, except through a muffler or other device which will effectively prevent louder explosive noises there from in. These cars are louder than the planes flying over my house. These cars are louder than my vacuum while I'm vacuuming. And this is with my windows closed. It's winter. It's gonna get worse. I've called, they know, we're on zero tolerance with them is what the police had told me. I told them, they got four vehicles blocking the sidewalk in the morning when the kids are walking to school. They have to walk in the street. The cop, the police officer came out, they drove in the alley behind Toscana, they never left the car to write a ticket. 
Never. Um, we're getting close to summer again. It's going to be the Navy Pier fireworks display with them again this year. All night, every night. It's not just me. It's my other neighbors across the street, one of which is very sick. She can't make it, and the other person is out of town for work. 179 calls from March of 2020 to March 20th of 2023 for that unit alone. And not all of them were me, in case anyone wants to know. Um, it needs to be done. We don't have the choice in what laws we enforce. The laws are there and they need to be enforced. Um, the response time, sometimes it's 30 minutes after I call. Again, I can see right into their driveway. I know when the police show up and I get it. There could be an accident, there could be some other emergency and they've got to respond. I get it, I know your police staffing constraints. Um, it needs to be dealt with before the summer because we're not having another summer like last year because it's getting progressively worse. The last time I was here a year ago, there was about 67 incidences. We're up to 179 calls to the police about that in our sentence. And that's as of a week ago. Thank you. Thank you. That's the final name on the signatures and sign in sheet for public comment. So we will now move forward with uh, the next item on the agenda, which Mr. is. Mayor. Yes. Can I say something? Yeah, quick sure. To the residents that came out today. I just want to thank you all very much for coming out today to express your concern <coughs> about the Lober property. Um, I've talked to many of you personally. A lot of you have uh, called me. You've been to my home. I've been to your home. And I, ap I do appreciate that. At this time, we do know that no plan has been submitted to Schomburg. We do have a good working relationship with Schomburg, and we are hoping that that continues and we will get the information. And when we get the information, we can get it to you guys as best that we can. Um, the last meeting we had, uh, Manager Sabo had uh, said to please email admin at uh, cityrm.org if you would like to be a part of the distribution list so that we can get information to you, again, the very best we can. Um, and as you know, this is in Schomburg's jurisdiction as far as any vote goes. So I really hope to see all of you at a Schomburg meeting to express your concerns about what is happening. And you know that I am on your side for what's going on here, and I, I appreciate you guys coming out. But um, again, Schomburg is probably where you guys want to kind of bring your next uh, con level of concerns because we've all heard it here tonight. And thank you again for coming out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Mikhail. Um, this will move us forward to items pending. We'll begin with uh, line item A, ordinance number 23-08 to authorize reserving the city's 2023 home rule private activity bond volume, volume cap. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. Is there any discussion on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none. And the question is, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Mikhail. Yes. Bud Matz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is adopted. This brings us to line item B, ordinance number 23-09, to approve deferring the imposition of the municipal push tax for the City of Rolling Meadows until October 31st of 2023. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Is there a second? second? Thank you, Alderman Reyes, for the second. Is there any discussion on this item? Alderman Budmatz? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in light of the fact that it seems to be difficult to get the video game operators um, and us on the same page about what we're trying to accomplish, um, I'm going to be voting no. I think it's time to uh, put the push tax into, into play. And if, it, and if it causes us to lose, um, lose businesses then in the gaming industry, I'm all for it. Um, if it's going to be, I, I would, I would make the push tax is exclusively only for gaming cafes. So I'm going to be voting no and um, and looking forward to <coughs> doing whatever it takes to get pressure on the gaming cafes in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bunmets. Any other discussion on this item? 
Alder Ms. Uh Thank you, Alderman Budmatz, uh, for your comment on that. Um, I, I am going to be voting in favor of, push, of the postponing this out to October 31st, and then from there to proceed with um, additional pressure on uh, our gaming cafes to ensure that they're compliant with the code and that our city staff continue to work with those business owners at this time. Um, if we come to a point where by October 31st, 2023, um, I'm much more open to then um, imposing the municipal push tax on our gaming cafes. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sanoika. Okay, if there's no further discussion on this item, the question is, uh, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Bud Mads. No. O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sanoika. Yes. McHale. Yes. With five in favor and one opposed, this ordinance is adopted. This brings us to the next item on the agenda, which are the consent ordinances in for first reading this consists of four items. Those are items C through F. Does any alderman wish to remove an item or items from the consent agenda for ordinances? Okay, seeing none. The chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the four ordinances in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. And this will kick us off with line item C, ordinance number 23-00 to approve Establishing and assessing a connection charge for Brockway Street Sanitary Sewer Extension to 2750 and 2751 Brockway and 4921 Old Plum Grove Road. Line item D, ordinance number 23-00 at this time to modify the permitted and special use within the Arlington Office Park Plan Development. Line item E, ordinance number 23-00, to authorize a special use permit for a gas filling station and related variations at 3005 Kirchhoff Road. And last, line item F, ordinance number 23-00, to amend the city code regarding the license and regulation of tobacco <coughs> and industrial hemp dealers. The question is, shall the four ordinances be moved forward for second reading? Will the clerk please call the roll? O'Brien. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. McHale. Yes. Bud Mats. Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, the ordinance move forward for second reading. This brings us to new business in line item G, a motion to approve payment of bills on warrant for March 28th, 2023. Is there a motion to approve the warrant? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. Is there any discussion on the payment of bills on warrant? Okay, seeing none, the question is, shall the warrant be approved? Will the clerk please call the roll? Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. McHale. Yes. Bud Mance. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. With four in favor, and er, sorry, with six in favor and none opposed, the warrant is approved. <coughs> this moves us to the next item on the agenda, which are the consent resolutions, and this consists of 11 items. Those are items H through R. Does any alderman wish to remove an item or items from the consent agenda for resolutions? Okay, good. Seeing none, the chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the 11 resolutions in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Sonoika. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. And this brings us to line item H, resolution number 23-R-38, to approve the purchase of a 2024 auto car Heil refuse truck in replacement of T337, a 2015 auto car Heil refuse truck from EJ Equipment in an amount of $393,697.47. Line item I, resolution number 23-R-39, is to approve the purchase of a street sign materials for 2023 street resurfacing and reconstruction projects from traffic control and protection in an amount of $18,000. $341.75. Moving on to line item J, resolution number 23-R-40 is to approve the purchase of a 2023 Ford Transit and equipment in replacement of RM186-T384, which is a 2006 Ford E450, and televising van from standard equipment in a not-to-exceed amount of $133,710.86. Line item K, resolution number 23-R-41 is to award a contract for construction services for Park Street Storm Sewer Improvements Phase 1 to Lenny Hoffman Excavating <coughs> in an amount of $942,088.43. 
Line item L, resolution number 23-R-42 is to award a contract to pre-form traffic control systems for annual pavement paint striping services in a not to exceed amount of $55,000. Line item M, resolution number 23-R-43 is to authorize our home improvement to perform improvements to the council chambers in conference room 230 and hallway in an amount of $126,021. Line item N, resolution number 23-R-44 is to approve a contract for the 2023 sidewalk and curb replacement program to Schrader and Schrader in a not to exceed amount of $160,000. Line item O, resolution number 23-R-45 is to authorize the purchase of an Envirosite Rover XHD mainline camera in a not to exceed amount of $124,805.42 from standard equipment. Line item P, resolution number 23-R-46 to authorize the annual leak detection survey of the city's water system with M.E. Simpson Company in a not to exceed amount of $15,252.50. <coughs> Line item Q, resolution number 23-R-47 is to award a contract for phase one engineering on Central Road from East Frontage to New Wilkie to Christopher B. Burke Engineering in an amount of $553,000. Line item R, resolution number 23-R-48 is to approve an agreement to demolish an unsafe structure on the property commonly known as 1548 Vermont Street in Rolling Meadows. The question is, shall the 11 resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Bassesi? Yes. Reyes? Yes. Tunoika? Yes. McHale? Yes. Bud Matz? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. With <coughs> six in favor and none opposed, the resolutions are adopted. <coughs> this will bring us to other business and reports. And the first item on the other business and reports is the mayor's appointments. This consists of eight reappointments. Um, after reviewing the eight appointees listed, does any alderman wish to remove an appointee from the reappointment list for discussion? Okay. Seeing none wish to be removed, the chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the eight reappointments in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? So moved. Thank you, Alderman Sonoy. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. Let's bring us to the first uh, commission, which is the Board of Fire and Police. The reappointment of Dave Walter to the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. Next is the reappointment of Christine Burbage to the Economic Development Committee. And then the reappointment of Kelly Sheehan, Kevin Sippel, and Vince Leone to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And finally, the reappointments of Father Brian Simpson, Dale Krizel, and Jerry Inselberger to the Veterans Committee. The question is, shall the reappointments be approved? Will the clerk please call the roll? Reyes? Yes. Sonoika? Yes. McHale? Yes. Bud Matt? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Bassesi? Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, the appointees have been reappointed. This brings us on to the next item on the agenda, which are the city staff reports. And for this, I'm going to defer to who is our acting city manager at this time, assistant city manager, uh, Glenn Cole, for item number one, community items of interest. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have three items of interest uh, for the council and the community this evening. Uh, the first is um, voting day is right around the corner uh, for the April 4th, 2023 consolidated election. <laughs> Traditional early voting is already available. It'll continue through Monday, April 3rd, and of course election day itself will occur the following day, Tuesday, April 4th. Um, voters who participate in early voting would need to vote in person at the Rolling Meadows Courthouse. That's room 238 at 2121 Euclid Avenue. Um, for more information uh, about Election Day, you can visit the Cook County Clerk's website. That's cookcountyclerkil.gov slash elections. Um, second, the Rolling Meadows Police Department will be participating in the Distracted Driving Campaign during the month of April. Uh, this campaign places a major focus on cell phone usage while driving. Police officers will be working to increase awareness of these dangers and encourage all motorists to, to put away their phones and give driving their full attention. Uh, third, the 18th Annual Taking Care of Business Luncheon will take place on Wednesday, May 17th, uh, starting at 11 a.m. Uh, we take care of business every day here at City Hall, but it only involves lunch on May 17th. Hosted by the City and the Rolling Meadows Chamber of, Commer 
Chamber of Commerce, excuse me. Uh, this event offers expanded opportunities for all city businesses and area residents to learn more about the city's economic development initiatives with a keynote presentation by the mayor. Uh, this lunch will take place at Meridian Banquets and to register um, residents, uh, uh, businesses can visit uh, rmchamber.org or call 847-398-3730. Um, some additional items. Uh, please save a life. Uh, consider giving blood on Thursday, April 27th from 1 to 7 p.m. here at City Hall. Um, you do need to have an appointment. You can register in advance at Vitalant, V-I-T-A-L-A-N-T dot org or call 877-258-4825. Um, as you heard earlier in the agenda, um, the city is aware of the possible development of the Lober Farms property and we've been working with our counterparts in Schaumburg. Uh, I'll just say again that um, the city has not received uh, any request from a developer about um, using city infrastructure. Um, they haven't submitted an application to the Village of Schaumburg. Um, residents who would like to rem remain apprised of these developments um, are welcome to email us admin at cityrm.org and can be included uh, on a city notification list for any future updates. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would also add uh, not necessarily an item of community interest but a, a staff report uh, not on this evening's agenda. Um, as acting city manager, I'm intending to authorize an emergency um, purchase in the near future uh, to repair a broken section of water main at Kirchhoff Road and Route 53. Uh, that section of water main has been uh, shut down for a couple weeks and city staff believes that shutdown is contributing to a number of uh, main breaks in the community because of pressure differentials caused uh, by water being routed through other parts of our system. Uh, specifically, we believe that these pressure spikes have contributed to uh, 11 main breaks that require, uh, have required three boil orders and about $69,000 in, in damage that's needed to be repaired. Uh, we believe that presents an emergency that will require action before the City Council um, next meets. So we're still obtaining proposals to for a contractor to perform that work. Um, when we have one in hand, there's a process that I'll need to follow with the council to um, make that purchase and the council will need to ratify it at their next meeting. Um, so tonight's report, again, is for information only. There's no action to take as it wa wasn't on the agenda, but as we know, this is for um, we wanted to announce that publicly. And thank you, Mr. Cole, for that. Any other community items of interest, as I spoke with you earlier about during matters not in the agenda, if any member of the council had not been uh, updated to that situation, there will be time if you have any questions, comments, or concerns uh, to use that time. Thank you again. Uh, the second item is the February 2023 financial report. And as you'll note, the financials are in the agenda packet. And if anybody has any questions, by now you all know at this point, you go to Finance Director Talkington, and she'll be happy to answer any of them. This brings us to the third and final item in the city staff reports and defer back to Mr. Cole and the April 11th, uh, 2023 draft city council agenda. Certainly. So uh, again, a copy of the draft agenda is here in your, um, in your agenda pack. It includes a number of items. Uh, of course, this is subject to change um, prior to your next, um, to your next meeting, but we try to be forthright in, in sharing these, uh, sharing what, you know, those items we do know about with you and with the community um, as soon as we can. Thank you, sir. Uh, this moves us on to matters not on the agenda. And as you heard from Acting City Manager Cole uh, regarding the water main break, are there any concerns or questions or any needs associated with that? If not, then we'll look forward to the updates as they come for pricing and council will take retroactive action when necessary. Are there any other matters not on this evening's agenda? Okay. Seeing any other matters not on this evening's agenda, then I would like to entertain a motion to go into closed session under Section 2C5 of the Open Meetings Act regarding the purchase or lease of property and under Section 2C6 of the Open Meeting Act regarding setting a price for sale or lease of property. Do I have that motion to go into yeah. closed session? So moved. Thank you, Alderman yeah. Sonoyga. Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for mm -hmm. the second. <coughs> Is there any discussion about entering into closed session? Okay, seeing no discussion, then I will ask for the clerk to call roll about entering into closed session. Sunoika? Yes. Mikhail? Yes. Bud Matz? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Misesi? Yes. Reyes? Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, we will now enter into closed session. Please be advised that we do not anticipate taking any further action upon returning to open session. So with that, I wish you all a wonderful evening. Have a good night.